Hello and welcome to today's live special webcast, a masterclass in refreshing your career. Today we're joined by Katrina Frill from Refresh, Refresh Your Thinking and today is all about you. It's about how you can reinvigorate, re-energize and refresh your career. So without any further ado, I'd like to get started. But before that, just a quick note that we encourage you to ask questions throughout the event and interact with us as much as possible. Please feel free to ask, use the Ask a Question chat feature which is located on the bottom of your screen. How are you today, Katrina? I'm excited. I'm very excited too. <laughs> this is an amazing topic and we've um, actually received so many registrations and everyone's wanting to know exactly the same thing. It's all about they're feeling disillusioned in what they're currently doing. They need ways to reinvigorate themselves and their career and hopefully move forward. So is that what today is all about? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So um, I believe we've got seven steps that we're going to go through, first of all. Step and I'd like step. to jump straight into that so okay. everyone can get as much insight as possible. So let's go into step number one. Um, and this refers to the eye of the owner, which we briefly spoke about, spoke about before this. And it's really interesting. So can you elaborate on what this actually means? I know. That's the first question I ask people. Yep. I say... <laughs> I, the owner, what do you think it means? Yeah. And so why don't we ask you, Sarah, what do you think it might mean? Well, I've cheated a little bit because yeah, I have actually had this conversation <laughs> with you. Um, but it is about ownership, correct, in your yeah. role and the organisation that you work for. So think about it like this. Um, you are the current guardian of your role, mm -hmm. which makes you the CEO of your role. Yep. And um, so the I, the owner for me is getting across the idea that there's some people that really take their role really seriously. They're often very proactive, yep. they're enthusiastic, they offer up suggestions, they're nice to have around mm. because they're solutions orientated, um, et cetera, et cetera. But what might be easier is to explain perhaps the opposite of the eye of the owner first mm -hmm. And then you'll kind of get the idea of this two types of people mm. that are in your organisation and affecting what is going on mm. inside the organisation. So think about it like this. Between five up to ten is I have the owner energy. Mm -hmm. So you could be a six out of ten, you could be a seven out of ten, you could be an eight out of ten, you could be a nine out of ten, nine and a half out of ten, I the owner. Amazing. Can you imagine <laughs> how awesome they yep. would be to work with? Yep. And I tell you what, when you're hiring, that's what you want to buy. Mm. So when you want to recruit somebody, you're kind of looking for the nine, nine and a half out of ten, I the owner. But the opposite of that, mm. so five, four, three, two, one, yep. naught is what I call the fat cat mentality. Okay. So the fat cat mentality is, excuse me, doesn't matter what I do, I'm getting paid on Friday. Yep. So um, they're getting paid on Friday. They don't add a lot of value. Um, they're the, the ones that won't come up with ideas. They'll mm. say things like, oh, that can't be done. Mm. Oh, we've tried that already. Yeah. Oh, for heaven's sakes, like, don't, you know, a more change around here, yeah. you know, all this sort of energy. And um, they become cancers within a business. So what I hate about this whole thing of having these fat cats in organisations is not only are they not adding a lot of value, mm. But I tell you what, they're better recruiters to their side of the fence okay. than I, the owner people. Mm. Because I, the owner people, are too busy getting on with it yeah. and being amazing. Okay, so if I've recognised that I'm a fat cat, help me, no, <laughs> um, you, how do you, you then be. transition to I of the owner, to being someone who's great to be around, someone who's really inspired in their workplace? How do you actually move from one to the other or can you? Well, what actually happens is I believe that most people start their job mm. with eye of the owner. Bright eyed. Bright eyed, bushy tailed, yeah. ready to go, can't wait, got a job, yeah. tell all their friends, I've got this new job, it's so amazing. They get in there, they're inducted, mm. they're enthusiastic, their eyes are open, they're yep. really ready to go and they give a lot of value and really try to learn what it is that they need to mm. do. What happens is over time, the business is either set up like culturally yeah. to keep those people like that. Yep. But what I find is that's not the case. Yeah. Most businesses I go into, people started at a nine, um, then they become an eight, mm. then they become a seven. And by the way, 
a secret, start to leave the job at around a seven. Don't yeah. wait till you're a four. Yeah. Because it's you'll get more job offers at a seven energy than you would at a four energy. So anyway, um, so what happens is over time, uh, you start to come off mm. and you go down, down, down. And um, once... Uh, you, you can actually tell by the way you wake up in the morning mm. and how easy it is to get out of bed. That yep. determines where you are on the, on the, on the mm. sliding scale. So if you start, by the time you're about a four, mm. you're having all your sick leave. Yeah. You so, so are struggling sign. to get out of bed. <laughs> Um, but by about a seven, uh, let's say I'm a, if I've got down to a seven, you maybe have been there a little bit too long. Mm. Um, stay in your roles. Um, if you're still learning mm. and the job's really evolving and uh, challenging you and inspiring mm. you, you'll probably stay in a role for about four years. Okay. Um, but if you stop learning and there's nothing really changing um, and you're starting to get a bit bored, uh, you'll probably only stay about two years. Yep. Um, but really high-performing, self-managing, mm. I the owner people, they're the, they're the ones everybody wants to yes. hire, um, they may move out of a role quite quickly because they know it's not right for them. Mm. They're not learning anything from their boss or from their team or mm. whatever. So they might go in a year. Mm. And you did touch on culture and yeah. um, we've done a few webinars and webcasts on the importance of culture within mm. an organisation and how employee engagement is now bigger than what it has ever been before. So if you are someone within an organisation and you can feel yourself starting to slump and you can feel yourself drifting down to those lower digits mm. what if your workplace doesn't offer you the ability to change is it something that you need to recognize and then move on or is it something that you can maybe go to your boss with and say look I think we need to try and work on this culture so we can have more eye of the owners mm. in an organization well you could answer that question from a number of points of view I actually think this principle this concept mm. actually applies not just to the individual but yep. you could take it to look at your team yep. so where is your team on this Richter scale mm. then you could say okay let's look at the department on the Richter scale yep. then we could say let's look at the organization on this Richter mm. scale so some businesses I go into are like a four out of ten fat cat culture and it's just the do they're dominant in terms they, of the That's the cats. dominant yeah. energy in the organisation. Yeah. Now, what's happened is the reason that's occurred mm. over time is because the fat cats have been allowed to stay. Yeah. A lot of leaders are scared to sack people. You know, there's laws, mm. um, you know, three warnings, um, you know... Uh, a lot of fat cats get to keep their job mm. and that really pisses me right yeah. off. Um, but other organisations I go into, they've got like this culture of about a seven or an eight mm. and what they'll get me in for is they'll say, okay, Katrina, we're doing really well. We've got yep. these amazing high performers. Um, I agree with you. We've got yeah. all these great eye of the owners taking responsibility and ownership and accountability and all those great mm. things. Um, we want to get the culture to a nine. What would that take? Yeah. So I'll go in and I'll consult and I'll go and um, get a bit of a feel for what's going yeah. on and I'll give them a couple of tips, just often very simple things, mm. to um, tweak. Yeah. And that'll take the organisation from an eight overall to a nine, even a nine and a half. Once you're up to a nine, nine and a half, you're in excellence. Mm. When you're a seven or an eight, you're great. Yeah. But when you're a, a sort of a five to six, you're good. Mm. So if you think of it, are you good? Mm. Are you great? Are you in excellence from an individual, from a team, from a department, from a company mm. point of view? And for those of you um, watching, I think it's a good idea to start thinking about what number you think you are at the moment. And yes. then also what number you think the culture is within your organisation and start working on that as we progress through these tips. Um, and at the end, we'll also let you know, um, Katrina's also offered a free coaching session to people as well. So if you're struggling with figuring out what you are, then she'll be able to help you with oh, that. Oh, yes. We'll <laughs> nail it. Quick smart. We'll get it down there. Yeah. Okay. So in fact, um, you know, everyone should have a piece of paper. Yep. They should write down the seven steps. Yep. They should put a current rating out of 10. Yep. Absolutely. And then a potential rating out of 10. Mm. And that way, by the time we catch up for our free coaching session together, and we can spend 30 minutes, 40 minutes together, absolutely free of charge over Skype, phone, whatever. And we'll go through and look at those gaps mm. and look at the points you're t chasing overall. And I'll give you like three or four great tips just to get that number yeah. up.
to go there because everyone's yeah. different, right? But do you know what? The fat cats won't call. No. <laughs> I promise you. All I'll get, the only ones that are going to want the free coaching session, I promise you, are, the are I or the owners. That's how you can tell that's a little hint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, it's always it's always a pleasure yeah. to uh, coach people and uh, I love doing it for free because yeah. it gets allows me to add value v really quickly. Yeah. It's not hard. Yeah. It's not hard. Okay, now step number two oh, as okay. we move on. Let's so go to we're step going to now look at step number two, um, control and influence. What's so all that about? I get that, but <laughs> the locus of control and influence, please explain. Please explain. Um, this essentially is the way I live my life. So okay. it's my philosophy on life. Mm -hmm. And what I find to be refreshed, mm. you actually have to have headspace. Yep. You've got to have energy. You mm. can't be like... Oh, exhausted, stressed out to the eyeballs. So yeah. why I have this step in the book is because I want to give people, good people, mm. good eye of the owners, I want to give them their energy back. Yeah. So what I do is a, a little thing called looking at your locus of control and influence. And the first thing we look at is we go, okay, what, we, what can we control? Mm. So if there's, a, if there's something going on for me, I'll go, all right, Katrina, what can you control here? Mm. And really, the only thing you can control is yourself. Yeah. That's it. So look at your attitude about it. Look at your mindset about it. Look at, um, you know, changing your energy about it. Look at letting it go. Mm. Look at all those things. You guys all know what I'm talking about. But just essentially look at yourself. And if I think I'm going to have a bad day, my attitude is, Oh, rolling my eyes. Yeah. Well, what kind of day am I going to have? Yeah. Whereas if I switch that to, I'm going to have a great day. It's going to be awesome. Can't wait to see Sarah. Yeah. Yay. Um, then naturally, I'm going to have a pretty good day. I'm yep. going to have a great session. Mm. So that's control. Just put in brackets, in what you can control is self. Yep. Now, let's go to influence. Now, with influence, you can only influence others. Mm. You can't control others. But what I work with executives on, is looking at working on their influencing skills. Mm. So influencing skills these days is what we used to call communication skills. Mm. Used to be what we called sales training. Yeah. Used to be called all sort of leadership <laughs> skills. Yeah. So if leadership skills, communication skills, sales skills, whatever it yeah. is you want, it really all sits in one word. You yep. either can exercise influence or you can't. Mm. So if I'm having a great day and you, my colleague, is mm. not, have I got the ability to exercise some influence here? Mm. So my energy, because I'm controlling my state, can I go and influence her to have a great day with me? Yeah. Right? So it's that kind of thing. Yep. Or exercising influence up. Yep. So up to your bosses and mm -hmm. to your executives above you. Exercising influence down and sideways with, okay. with your client, with your um, colleagues. So you get the idea around mm. control and influence. Where I want to give you your energy back is simply getting really clear on what it is you can't control. So a couple of little easy ones mm. is you can't control the weather. So why around the world are we wasting so much energy talking about it? Yeah. <laughs> And whinging about it. It's oh, a great it's cold, isn't it? Started oh, it. it's hot, isn't it? It's Everyone... an icebreaker. <laughs> okay, I get that. I, I do get that it's a social nicety. Yeah. Um, but okay, so weather is the weather. Anything mm. that you can say it is what it is to mm. sits in this okay. in this zone. So weather, traffic, you've got no control or influence mm. over the traffic. It is what it is. So I don't waste any time on weather or traffic. So yeah. that aside, what else are we whinging about? Mm. What else are we moaning about? One of the things in organisations that people spend a heap of energy on is whinging about technology. Yeah. Oh, the server's slow, isn't it? Oh, God. Do you know? I so <laughs> you get really clever about taking your energy back mm. and putting it into things that you can control and influence and really start to get super genius mm. about getting rid of anything that you can't control and not spending any energy on it. Mm. And that will make for a great life. So if you are wasting about 30% of your energy, mm. then put down a 7 out of 10. Okay. And Got if it. you'd like to get really good up yep. to about a 9, mm. then you want to 
only get that down to a 10%. It's, it's so interesting because when I was younger, my grandfather told me this, and you know, you remember these certain things when you're a child, and he always said, stop stressing about things that you can't control. And at the time, like, oh yeah, pa, you whatever, just it. like I need to do my maths homework, whatever. Kids and are drama behind yeah. They love drama. <laughs> you get older and then you realise, but it's so hard to constantly think about that and remind yourself because we can all, we're all guilty of falling into the mm. trap of, you know, having a little bit of a whinge here and there or event. But do you think if you take on this mentality, Mm. then you will even be influencing other people within your organisation without even realising. You're an incredible role model. Yeah, and you're yeah. becoming eye of the owner just by doing that That's little exactly step. Right. That's exactly right. The reason I have it, and I'm so passionate about this particular mm. concept, and I use it as my own philosophy on life um, very seriously, so yeah. mine, mine would be down to about a 5% yep. wastage okay. or a 10% wastage. Um, at this point, but most people I find are so stressed out, they're so flat out, they're so busy, they're exhausted on a Friday, mm. I think a lot of the time because of this. Yeah. And so that's why I'm doing it. I'm trying to say, guys, there's no need. Mm. Just, you know, as, as that wonderful book said, don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. It's kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. Oh, you want to move on? Yes, let's move on. Okay, wonderful. Let's go to step three now. I like the look of this one. It just looks very, it looks like we're in a yoga <laughs> environment or something yeah. like that. Um, personal power. Right. So this is a, quite a serious one. Is A lot of the uh, clients that I work with, mm. either training them or coaching them, is um, that they don't have a lot of personal power, which means you're not very refreshed in your mm. life. You're at the mercy of other people yep. because you're not owning your own space. Okay. So the way to give to, to determine what you should give yourself as a rating is have a think about how do you walk into a room? Mm. If you walk into a room, you own your space, you sit right down, you pick a chair, mm. um, you don't apologise for being there, mm. you suck up air so that you can speak up and speak out because mm. if you don't suck up the air and don't feel like you deserve to suck up your fair share of the air... Mm then you won't speak up and speak out. Mm. So this affects your career. If you, you've got to get your personal power up to, you know, a six or a seven just to be effective. Yeah. You've got to own your space. Yep. I'm All I'm owning at the moment is I'm owning this space mm. and you are beautifully owning yours. We're owning it. We're <laughs> owning it, exactly. And so if you looked at our, our, the two of us yeah. interacting, this is a nice interaction yep. because... I own my bit and mm. you own your bit. I have just as much right to speak yep. as you do and vice versa. And um, you can really influence mm. much more yep. by having personal power. Yep. Now, in excellence, this is so attractive. When somebody has nine, nine and a half personal mm. power, they are what we call magnetic. Yeah. People describe them as charismatic etc etc yep. you get the vibe but to me there is nothing more attractive in a woman or a man who owns their space mm. they feel they have rights nothing worse than somebody going oh sorry sorry do you mind if I just go to the toilet yeah oh sorry sorry do you mind if I just interrupt for a minute like, say your piece. Yeah. Everyone's allowed to talk. Get in there. Yeah. But it takes personal power. So, please, if this is your challenge, mm. I really want to work with you. I really want to have that 30 minutes with you just yep. to go through what is it in your childhood? What is it that you haven't developed your personal power mm. in a natural way? Yep. Some kids are born with it. Have you yeah. seen some kids? Yeah. Um, whereas what I find with working with a lot of executives is this has been erased mm. and decreased over time. Wow, that's So they were amazing as kids, yeah. but they now in the workplace, they've been bullied, yeah. um, things have happened, they've lost their confidence, mm. and now they go, oh, I just don't, you know, who am I? Don't worry about it. Yeah. And this will not help your career, so please yeah. have a look at personal power. This could be a major breakthrough mm. for some people. Okay, and I think this ties in nicely to the next step, um, okay. which is what we're going to go into, which is um, emotional intelligence, I believe. Yeah, this has been around for um, about 30 years. Well, yeah, that's what I was thinking <laughs> when I was going through this at the beginning. And, that, you know, I hear so much about it and I think a lot of people think they have a high 
emotional intelligence scale mm. or whatever you call it. Um, but I don't really see it happening a no. lot out there. And I think, um, you know, how do we determine what it is or whether we have it or... Right. Well, there's a couple of things um, I'd like to say about emotional intelligence mm. is one it's been around a, a while yeah second thing to realize um google nine intelligences so emotional intelligence is one of nine intelligences but what was the one that was focused on at school iq iq yeah right so everyone grows up only yep. really knowing mm. about iq and some kids came out going well, if I don't have high IQ, mm. I must be dumb and useless yeah. or they lose a personal power, they lose confidence, whatever. Mm. But emotional intelligence today is the most respected mm. in business. It's the one we focus on. Have you ever seen somebody that's highly academic, incredible, like an inventor, mm. like a genius, mm and can't get their product to market, yeah. can't sell anything, can't get anyone to take any notice. It's because yep. IQ doesn't help you. Yeah. EQ is what makes you a success. Mm. And you can read up as much as you like on that. There's plenty of evidence yep. on the internet. Um, so it's a big one for me because when I discovered this, I it kind of unpacked a lot of stuff for mm. me. So if you notice, it's really two things, just yep. to put it very simply. One half of it is know thyself. Mm -hmm. Because if you know your triggers and your problems and your issues, then you can go and fix them up. Yep. So if you know yourself, you're 50% mm. great EQ, yep. emotional intelligence. The other half of it is when you know yourself, you are able to understand your impact on others. Okay, yep. So then you can, um, if you got, uh, I see people get like really angry. Let's say they get furious at work, yell at someone mm. inappropriately, then come in the next morning and go, oh, Sarah, sorry I was rude to you yesterday. Do you think that fixes it? Do they understand the impact they've had on you? Definitely not. They don't. So mm. see how they don't know why they got upset. They don't know why they were triggered into anger. You should go and sort that out. Mm. And then they think saying sorry is going to fix the impact and it doesn't. Mm. So to me, that kind of behaviour indicates to me low EQ. Mm. So we really want to be looking at this for ourselves. We teach it in every leadership management masterclass yep. I do. This is in there. Yep. And every MBA around the country, any course has usually got something about mm. EQ in there. So then um, you can do a bit of a quiz and determine how much self-awareness have you got? How good are you at self-regulation? Mm. How much motivation have you got access to? How empathic are you? Mm. And some people are extreme empaths mm. and other people go, um, I don't know what people are thinking. Yeah. You know, they have no idea mm. about other people and how they feel. And then the other one that often gets overlooked, but I actually think is one of the great secrets of success is having really good social skills. Well, that, yeah, definitely makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, just walk in the room, yeah. hi, how are you? Let's get going and mm. you can build rapport really quickly. And be memorable. And be memorable, yeah. exactly. And then you become magnetised yeah. and then you have personal power, etc. Yep. Yeah. So I um, don't want to spend heaps of time on it because yeah. I could talk about this for days, but um, at the very least, uh, you could simply email me and yep. I'll send you a quiz. Okay. Great. So you can work out where you are yep. and where your areas of improvement mm. are. Or I recommend the book. Yeah. There's an actual book called Emotional Intelligence. Just get it. It's a standard text mm. for all executives. So we've all read it. You guys, everyone should yeah. read it. It's just one of those bestsellers of yeah. all times. Yeah. yeah. Um, and for those of you who would like any more information on what we're talking about, um, there's a tab which says survey or feedback, one or the other, might even be both. Um, <laughs> if you just click on that um, before you actually leave today's event and complete the feedback as we're going through, just type in the additional comments what you actually like and we'll have that stuff emailed over to you. Oh, cool. Okay, step number five. We're getting through the steps. Good. I'm liking this. Well, I want time for questions. Yeah. Okay, yeah. this looks very fiery and powerful. Do you like this picture? And yeah, yeah, love it. So one of the secrets of success is really understanding how much fire in your belly you have on things. Mm. Some people have a heap of fire in their belly. They've got lots of get up and go. Mm. And they really are the make it happen type people. Yep. And so if you could give yourself a rating out of 10 for how much initiative mm. you have access to, 
Um, some people will be in excellence. Mm. This will be their strength. Have you got a lot of initiative? I, I think so. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> so do I. This is not one of my problems. Yeah. Um, in fact, what um, this learning for me was actually the opposite of this. What do you mean? So I have too much fire in my belly, yep. too much get up and go, too much make it happen, quite naturally. Yep. So I find that everything is a shiny pebble. Yeah. Um, and so my learning around this to be more successful, actually what I needed to do is know when to have no initiative on things mm -hmm. and what to put all that energy into. Okay. And so that was a very uh, big learning for me. And I tell you what, the minute I understood that, mm. it revolutionised my life because now I have laser focus. Okay, and that can obviously, in your career, so if I can relay that yeah, to, relate to, your, to my career. your job, um, is that more so you know, knowing when to delegate? knowing when to do something yourself, knowing when to, you know, put a lot of energy and focus into one thing when really it's not really relevant, it's not going to get the maximum outcome. That's Is it. that what we're... So for me, I have to know what to put my attention on to, mm. what's going to give me the biggest bang for my buck. Yep. Because we all only have 24-7. Yep. Oprah has 24-7, you have 24-7, mm. Richard Branson has 24-7, we all have we only 24-7. So to make sure that if you've got high initiative naturally, really understanding um, like the 80-20 rule. 20% yep. of what you're going to do mm. is going to give you 80% of your result. Mm. So use your initiative on that 20% of stuff that's mm. going to give you the biggest bang. Now, let's bring it down to people. That, let's talk about people that perhaps don't have a lot of fire. Yeah, what can they do? Is it something that's just inherent in you? That's what I always thought it was. I think with it is a bit or... of a natural thing. Yeah. yeah, some people just have a lot of energy, and they're kind of just those kind of people. They get on and get get on get with it, it type people. Yeah. Um, but what I do it, with when I'm coaching somebody with this at a three or a four, mm. they really struggle to put their resume together. They struggle to get. Up out of, here, out of bed in the morning, um, struggle to think for themselves. They struggle to, um, uh, you know, turn up to interviews on time. They struggle to talk at meetings. I mean, there's really just low energy on mm. everything. So what I talk about is let's find what you're actually fiery about, because if you've if your life has ended up where you're dragging your ass through the day, yeah then really you probably really haven't found your passion. Mm. You haven't got a purpose. There's no meaning in it for you. The minute you find meaning, mm. you get purpose, you got passion. I tell you what, this just turns on. And you have you to are have ignited. fire about something, right, in your yeah. life? I have fire about my business. I have yeah. fire about my books. I have fire about being here today. Mm. Imagine if I couldn't be bothered and I had no energy, I wouldn't do it. Mm. If, the, if the, the idea of coming in here gave me no fire, mm. then it's not the right thing not to do. That. So your intuition mm. kind of gives you an idea on what you should be doing. Yep. Because it says, oh, that's exciting. Yeah. And suddenly you have all the energy in the world. Mm. When it drains your energy, and often people are in jobs that drain their energy, they're not going to have a lot of in, um, initiative at work. Naturally, mm. they're not going to be very good Yeah, because there's nothing there driving it. Fire drive th drives things. Mm. Fire makes things happen. So just allow me to have that 30-minute coaching with you mm. and we'll soon work out what, what switches you, you on, yeah. okay, what great. gets you fiery. Okay. Next step. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so I shouldn't be in charge of this clicker. <laughs> I know. Um, now, this looks quite self-explanatory, but oh, obviously good. it's not going to be because no. I know you're going to <laughs> make it into something even more amazing. Oh, thank you. Um, so confidence. Now, okay. once again, is this something that is natural in people or can you learn to be more confident and therefore have a better career? It's usually the other way around. You're born probably with a, as a kid, you up till about two, you actually think the universe will revolves around you. You like you are yeah. the center of the universe. <laughs> so um, that's why they call it the terrible twos. Yeah. Because suddenly the kid realizes that um, they're not the center of the mm. universe and it's not all built for them. Yeah. So um, pretty much most people go on a journey to um, lose their confidence. So by the time I meet a woman or a man, um, most of my business is um, working with people who 
are asking for more confidence. Mm. And my friend Lisa Phillips has just written her new book on confidence. Yep. Um, the wonderful Jen Harwood, she set up the Confident Woman series yes. and we were involved in that. Um, so you can see confidence is a hot topic. Mm. Everyone wants it. And you know what? Everyone knows when they don't have it. Mm. So all I want to do here today is just show you the structure of confidence. Yep. And so that you understand why you are sometimes you have confidence on something and why you don't. If you've got confidence on something, you believe you can, yep. so you have self-belief. Yep. Um, you believe it adds value, so you've got sort of some fire about it. Um, and you've practiced it enough to get quite self-assured mm. about it. Um, now, when you're not confident, let's say you start a new job, you've got to ask yourself, so you self-coach. Yep. You say, do I believe I can do this job? Mm. Well, you wouldn't have taken the job if you didn't think you could. Yep. So self-belief is probably not the problem. Yeah. Um, do you believe this job will add value to your life? Hmm. Obviously, you need a wage. Yeah. Um, so you're motivated to come in and add your value and get your wage. Hmm. So it adds a lot of value. So probably self-value isn't your problem. Hmm. The reason you're not confident is because you haven't practiced the job yet. Yeah. You haven't had induction. You haven't been gentle with yourself as you learn new skills and new ways of doing things, hmm. etc. Come back to the same person in three months six months, mm. 12 months. Okay, now 12 months. Do you think confidence is an issue? Yeah. No. Now, let's get into the um, the reason why people brand themselves not confident mm. as a whole person. Yeah. It's linked back to personal power. Okay. People with high personal power has have natural confidence and they are willing to give things a go. They know it will take practice. Yes. Um, so they don't beat themselves up mm. while they're learning something new. Um, and they believe that they'll get it in the end mm. and they have to believe that that task is important to know, to learn. I'm starting to see the you know, structure yeah, of it. Yeah, and how it's all sort of And is your together. brain working starting out how you've been over. hard on yourself? Yeah, and you, you do. You start to reevaluate yourself and what you do on a daily basis and how you interact with other people. And yeah. I think that I'm the same. I always thought you're either a confident person or you're not a confident no. person, but there are so many layers that actually That's go exactly into it. exactly right. 50 million things will come up in a year mm. and some of them you'll be absolutely confident yep. on and other things you'll be not confident mm. on. So when you first did your first two camera mm. webcast or anything to yeah. camera, were you confident? God, no. <laughs> no. But did you and I cringe when I look back at them. <laughs> but did you believe you can? Yeah. Well, you, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you think having that skill would add value? Yeah. Yes. And have you stuck with it long enough to be this elegant? There you go. There you go. Done. That's all it is. Whereas naturally low confident people, mm. they will never start the learning process in the beginning. Mm. You said, I'll do it once to the best of my ability, but it's not going to be as good mm. as what you'll be in 12 months. Yeah. So confident people... Where I start is saying things like, okay, give it a crack. Yep. Confident people say things like that. They'll mm. go, do you know what? Let's I'll do just it. do my best. Yeah. Do you, how many times have I done this? Yeah. I came with the attitude today going, oh, webcast. I wonder what that's oh. all about. So <laughs> I know, we had no rehearsal. I'll give it a crack. Now, okay, I present all the time. Yeah. Obviously, I'm on stage fairly regularly. So I can use those skills yes. and say, Katrina, it's likely you'll be okay today. Mm. It's likely. And it's like you've got then, tell me if I'm right, yeah. the emotional intelligence to realise that you've got those skills and you can then put them into practice. That's in right. This sort self of environment. awareness. You've around got that, that self yeah. awareness. And I came in with the attitude saying, I believe I can do it. Yes. And I, I think doing this today will add value yep. um, to not just me, but to the Other audience people. and, yep. you know, people out there. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm quite happy to come back, Sarah, and do it again and have another practice, Yay. you know. Um, <laughs> exactly. And I'm sure if I've done this 20 times, mm. I'll just get better and better at it. Yeah. But if this is my first time, well, give it a crack, have a go and be gentle with yourself. Mm. The last thing I'm going to do is come out of this room and start beating myself up mm. about, you know, where I could improve or, mm. or, or what I could have done better or any of that. Just mm. say to yourself, you did the best you could. It was great. It was good enough. Mm. And hopefully there's one person out there going, I had a great session with yeah. Katrina today and Sarah. Yeah. You great. Know? Understandable. Okay, now the final tip, because we've got some great questions coming through, so please keep them coming. 
as we move on, Katrina. Da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> okay. So part of um, being really, really successful in life mm. in general, um, not just your career, is actually working out where is the place where you can be most authentic, yep. most yourself. Yep. So give yourself a rating out of 10 for how true to yourself you can actually be in your current role. Mm -hmm. And when you say true to yourself, mm. can you just elaborate? Well, to be fake yep. and to put on a mask yep. and go, okay, I've got to train now. I've got yeah. to be in front of Sarah now. I've yep. got to do a webcast now. I'll just grab my professional mask. Mm. And to put that professional mask on, do I have to really concentrate? Mm. It means I have to use a lot of energy to put that face on. Yep. In my case, I think you can gather what you see is what you get. <laughs> Um, I am what I am. Yeah. I'm totally fine with that. Yeah. Uh, some people will love you. Some people probably won't. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think you'll get a sense of how authentic I am. Mm. And I get a sense that you're what I see is what, what yeah. you are and you're being yourself. Yep. If we weren't, this would take five times the energy. Mm. So if you want a lot of energy back and you want to be really successful in life, then the trick is to fall into your authentic self and yep. really go on a journey. And mm. I think a lot of people who are into personal development go on a journey yeah. very quickly um, to find out who are they? What's it all about? What makes them tick? What gives them fire mm. in their belly? What's their purpose? What's their passion? And when you go on that journey and you discover all of that, suddenly you go, I'm okay. Mm. It's okay. Yeah, I am what I am. Take me as I am. It would just be so exhausting it's to exhausting. constantly put on a facade like that. Not so only... you're wasting time. You're yeah. wasting energy and you can't be successful mm. because you've, you're using all your energy up In another to way. be a fake version of yourself yep. and pretend that you're this or mm. you pretend that you're that. Um, right down to, can you tell whether I'm a really formal person yep. or a really casual person? I think you're in the middle. Yeah, um, I, I suppose like you can, I am you can, in the middle today. You you have self awareness, so you yeah. can adapt to your or like if you're in a formal setting or a formal environment, and this was a completely different setting, and it wasn't just a casual chat between us. Yes, you would be able to adapt to that situation, but because it's just a casual chat, you know that you can put on that sort of not put on that was yes, my word. Yes. <laughs> um, you can just act a little bit more casually than what you would normally. Use. So it's almost like a scale. I it would see it as an absolute scale, but mm. it would take more energy for me to pretend mm. that I'm a very formal person. Yeah. I'm actually not. Yeah. I'm a very casual person um, and that doesn't take any energy for me to be. Yeah. Um, so imagine if I took a job in a very formal, mm. conservative environment. Mm. Can you see how that's going for me to get through my day yep. and for, you, for me to do my job? It's going to take five a times the energy, yeah. which is going to make me really tired on Friday. Yeah. So if you can find a culture, find a job, find the right sort of place for yourself mm. where you can be yourself and that is celebrated, yeah. I tell you what, you'll have a very successful life and you'll be completely refreshed and every amazing. Friday. <laughs> yeah. And that's what this is all about. Yeah. It's just I'm trying to give people seven things that they've got a lot of control and influence mm. over um, that they can change and they can think about and very simply start to go, Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. I know where to put my energy. Or even now. where to start. That's the biggest thing. And when to give up on yeah. things and go, do you know what? That friend of mine is draining me. Mm. I have to be not myself. Yeah. So I'm out of the relationship. Exactly. Have you ever broken up with a girlfriend? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to get some questions now because we've got some great ones coming through. So we'll just go to the next slide. Um, here's just some information. Um, like I said, if you want to complete the survey, you'll also just put in there that you want some free coaching and then we can organise that with Katrina. Um, but we have a question from Sanya. So she agrees with personal power, but how does it reconcile with manners, etiquette and courtesy in a meeting? <laughs> That's a very formal person asking that question, I'm <laughs> taking a guess. Um, so to me, manners and etiquette are just a given. It's the way society has developed. Without mm. those 
things, um, society wouldn't be the great place yep. that it actually is. Yep. So we don't just walk down the street and bump into whoever yeah. we want. That wouldn't be very refreshing. Mm. Um, in fact, that's a really hard way to live life. Mm. Um, so to me, being polite um, is kind of a given. Yeah. And people with personal power know exactly how polite to be. Mm. I'm actually a bit outrageous. <laughs> um, I'm not known for my, my politeness. I kind of am known more for ha saying how it is. Yeah. And because I'm a coach, I actually have to nail the issue. Yeah. So um, that's not always polite, but I am taking into account the people's feelings. Yes. I am adjusting my message. I am making sure that it's delivered in the most gentle way for mm. them, but they need to get it. Um, and so, look, I respect politeness and etiquette, but I would prefer people to speak up and speak out. Mm. And if that feels rude mm. at first, it's only because you're not used to it. Yeah. And I think if you um, take into account emotional intelligence, what we're talking about before yeah. and having you that kind empathy, of how to do it. you know the people who you are communicating with on a regular basis. And how to present your ideas. Yeah. Um, to me, you've been successful in a meeting and you've been polite and done all the right mm. etiquette um, if you get the result you were after. Yeah. If you didn't get the result you were after and no one said anything or no one agreed with you, then you mm. failed to exercise influence. Yep. And a lot of, in a lot of cases, I speak to a lot of executives in, um, in, the, in their jobs and a lot of them are simply just not even speaking up. Mm. So to me, that's impolite yep. to not communicate to not collaborate to not get involved mm. sorry Sarah, I, i'm getting i'm getting riled up okay. i better calm down but okay we'll yeah I, I i respect more that somebody stood up and yeah. said something than they quietly sat politely mm. silent yeah get but, involved yeah Okay, now um, Tara, um, just to let you guys know, we will actually re um, be, resend be sending a copy of the recorded presentation from today and the PowerPoint slides. Why did I talk too quickly? It, <laughs> oh, I think I should have mentioned very that at the beginning. It was, um, yeah, my bad. Um, so we have a question from Tara here. So I think I have a lot of initiative, and sometimes I possibly do do too many things because yeah, of this so she's initiative. A bit like me. And yeah, we can all relate to that. <laughs> yeah. um, I also think that I have some creative thinking, and using my initiative may go off on a different tangent to what the managers or directors are thinking, mm. although they haven't communicated this. So, how do you harness this and channel into the right path so you are more efficient? Right. So, I totally respect creative mm. thinking. And um, people with high initiative, I think we could safely say, are going to be quite naturally creative. Mm. Now, creativity is great, but everything needs to be in balance. Mm. So if you've got big muscle with creative mm. creativity, but no muscle with consistency, mm then what tends to happen is you go around changing everything yep. all the time. Mm. Got an idea for this, I've got an improvement for that, and people get exhausted yeah. with the changes. I mean, we've got enough change to contend with without creative people with big muscles um, saying, oh, let's change it all the time. Mm. So I would like, um, I'd like you to think about creativity with intelligence and mm. saying also we respect... Um, consistency mm -hmm. if something ain't broke then yep. don't fix it mm. um, etc so there's really balancing out those two things now I have high initiative and high creativity yes. but what I had to learn when I had my jobs was also sticking with the process yes. following the system crossing my t's dotting my i's and not coming up with a new fancy way of doing it all yeah. the time because businesses don't run successfully mm. this way they do initially yep. in the startup phase but a true successful business is actually successful mainly because there's a process there's a system it's repeatable yeah and you know everyone just gets on with it we mm. don't have to have a new way of doing it every day yeah 
Does well, that answer the question? That definitely does. Oh, and I think, um, like me, a lot of people can relate to those people out there. And I think in organisation, you probably have both types of people, but it's That's right. understanding how you can balance both it out and make it Both types of people work. need to balance it yeah. out. So these people need to actually learn how to be creative yep. and innovative and get more of the eye of mm. the owner so they can continuously improve. Yep. And these people need to calm down and just follow yep. the system and yeah. not change everything all the time. And just finally, just quickly, because we've got about one minute to go. Oh. Um, oh, from Jenny, I know, time flies. I'm having, having so much fun. fun. <laughs> yeah. um, how can people use these steps in choosing a new job? Are there any boxes that they should tick? Or Because this seems Absolutely. like if people, I think a few people may have realised on this event that maybe they're not in the right place, they need Sorry. to move on. How do they then use this and adapt to new opportunities? Yeah, so I would be, um, these are all great questions mm. actually in an interview. Mm. So I'd like recruiters to use a lot of these questions in recruiting people and finding out, um, asking them to uh, rate themselves out of 10 for these things. Yep. And don't put people with high initiative into a process driven job because mm. it's not a good fit. No. But for, while that's not happening, mm. um, come over to you as an individual and start to ask questions like, um, what kind of culture is it here? Mm. Um, if I was really proactive and enthusiastic about making a change, would that be accepted in the organisation? Mm. And they'll sort of soon tell you, no, just um, we don't pay you to think. Yeah, That's one job I wouldn't take. If somebody yeah. said uh, to me, I don't pay you to think, Katrina, yeah. I'd be like, out of there. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can just look really intelligent in interviews by mm. asking these sort of questions around. So formulate questions around these seven yeah. things. And then I think there's so much on, you know, like I said before, um, corporate culture and employee engagement on company websites. So if you are on that higher scale, you do some research on the company, you'll get a good insight or understanding as to what the culture is about before even taking that interview. You, you bet. Yeah. I, I, and I think use your intuition. Mm. Your intuition will, um, will tell you whether this is a right fit mm. for you and um, if you're desperate for a job um, just think about if you are desperate for a job and you t take the wrong fit mm. how much personal power and confidence will you lose by being in the wrong environment for you and I tell you what I've learnt this the hard way yeah. over my 30 year career um, I've often been in the wrong box mm. and I think part of why I've written the book and part of the reason why I can talk mm. about these issues is because I've been there, I've done it, I've, 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 I've been in the wrong place at the wrong time yeah. and I tell you what, you're miserable, yeah. you're unhappy and you've got no energy yeah. and I just don't want to be that person. Yes. I just don't want to be. Life's too short for that. Yes. I want to be happy, have lots of energy and I want to have fun. And I think that is the perfect note to wrap this oh, up on. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you as well. It's been fantastic. And thank you everyone out there for joining. We really hope you got some inspiration and you can now go back and start to reinvigorate your career and perhaps even your life and take a look at it. I know I've learned a thing or two, maybe three. Ah, good. Um, so, you know, please, like I said, complete the survey. Let us know if you want any more information from Katrina or read back ourselves and keep a lookout for that email which will be coming. Um, I think it's a great, you know, to share the recording along your, among your organisation, you know, hold a lunch and learn or something and sit down for 45 minutes and share this with the rest of your teams. I think it's great information that we don't really pay too much attention to. Wonderful. So thank you everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you at the next Business Skills event. Thanks for coming. Bye.